Okay, next we're gonna come to putting our sidewall channel on the two diagonal sides of the chimney. We've cut our kerf, and um, as you can see, the sidewall channel has a water return channel that has a hem that's going to keep any water that comes around the shingle from going sideways, but rather coming out and draining through the bottom of the shingle. Again, I'm going to try to have a tab that wraps down around so that I cover the unpainted surface. I'm going to have a tab that wraps around the front of the chimney, a tab that wraps around the back of the chimney, and again about a half an inch up here at the top to extend into the kerf. I want my water return channel to at least extend an inch past the, uh, past the chimney and perhaps even further than that, depending on where the next shingle comes in. I want to make sure that this water return channel comes out of the butt of the shingle. Here, it, it won't be any problem at all. I'm going to go three or four inches beyond the top of the shingle. Here, I went about four inches, and I'm going to put one nail uh, up here at the top to uh, keep the sidewall ch channel into, into position. As you can see, I have already marked a piece. Um, I have my one inch point right there that's going to extend beyond the chimney. I'm going to make sure that that gives me the one inch that I want. I'm going to come to the upslope side of the piece and just temporarily nail it in place. That will allow me then to take a pencil or a marker and mark the bend line that's going to come around the front of the chimney. This tab right here will wrap around the front and this tab right here will wrap down around this unpainted metal and then this top half an inch or so is going to wrap underneath to hold it in place. I'm going to Come to the back side and again mark the corner of the chimney. Once I take it off, I'm going to be able to again use my steel ruler to make a one inch tab that's going to wrap around the back side. I'm going to cut out all the way down to here and then cut back to there. I'm going to leave just a, you know, a sixteenth or to an eighth of an inch um, extra material here just in case any water is underneath there. It'll stay in the channel and, and migrate downward. Notice here I'm going to cut all the way down to that point there. Cutting off of there. That first. And then this is going to wrap down and around. And I can overbend that. Just grabbed a little longer six inch seamers here. Do the bend as well. Bend this to insert into the kerf. Bend this, cut that so it doesn't stick up too high for the back flashing to go into the kerf on the back side of the chimney. Come over to the side of the chimney now. Again, I'm going to run a bead of sealant in my kerf first.
if we want, we could put a sheet metal screw in here and hopefully avoid the corner of the chimney to attach those two together. Or we simply could just rely on sealant. Um, we're going to go ahead and put clips along the side here that will help hold it in place. And remember, we're going to have shingle coming in from this side that's going to stick in here. So this, this piece of sidewall really is not going to go anywhere. You can probably just leave it as it is without any putting any fasteners there in the front. Okay, now that we have our sidewall pieces in place, the next thing I want to make sure that I do is apply sealant right here at the, this point of intersection, because that is a possible water infiltration point. So I'm going to seal that. The next shingle is going to go over the water return channel and over this part of the apron flashing. So I'm going to set it in place and uh, I'm going to determine at what point it's going to go over the edge of the apron flashing. Take it up and you can see I've already got it cut and uh, if I open it up now and I'm going to cut out drain slot for the water return channel. Okay, I'm going to insert the shingle. Make sure it's firmly locked into place. And you'll notice here that um, the one nailing tab is positioned over the water return channel. So I'm going to just take a clip I can put a little bend in the clip and that will give me a second fastener for the shingle. Okay I've come to my top course that's going to go into the sidewall flashing and I I turn my shingle upside down to determine where I need to cut the shingle off over on this side. I turn it over, I cut it off, and then notice that I, I put a little quarter inch um, hem on this side of the shingle. That's going to stop any wind driven rain that might get under here from getting blowing behind there, but rather is going to divert it down into the water return channel.